Hello! So, um, this is my first um, photography editing video. Um, now, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the wonderful Lightroom Classic. And we're going to be looking at a recent um, uh, set of photographs that I took um, in the Alps in France recently. Um, now, I'm going to be focusing on uh, two things um, for this video. The first is my approach to Lightroom. Um, and uh, second is we're going to be focusing on HDR photography and some other editing tips that I use in terms of masking um, and other editing tips that I'll, I'll take you through today. So first thing we're going to do is, uh, is um, uh, talk a little bit about my approach. So my approach to editing is really, really, um, it's so important to me to make sure that the photo really communicates my experience of the place. I don't want to create a composite from other skies or other locations or put together some kind of dreamy, unrealistic landscape. I want the edits to really kind of sing out about what it was about that particular composition, that particular moment in time that I took that makes it work. And that's what it's all about. So whether it's creating panos or HDR or doing something even more fancy in Photoshop, they always want to have that really natural feel and just going back to kind of how it felt to be there really kind of taking me back to that moment and then being able to share that experience with you. So that's what I'd like to try and achieve in my editing. So um, I thought we'd start uh, with uh, and start with this whole process by looking at HDR um, photography um, and I'm going to show you two exposures and we're going to we're going to work on those and um, I'll just take you through a little bit about HDR photography okay so before we begin on the screen just a couple of things so my approach to HDR it's very useful to be able to blend exposures but as soon as that blend starts to look unrealistic or kind of um, uh, kind of nasty, kind of uh, oversaturated colours or anything like that, I don't go anywhere near it. I use it as subtly as possible. Generally, I'd like most people to look at them and think, oh, that's not an HDR photograph. So I'm going to take you through that. Okay, so let's have a look at the screen. Here we are. So we're in Lightroom Classic and we're going to start off by looking at HDR. Now, many photographs have enough dynamic range that you can increase the, um, you can lighten the darks and, um, and darken the lights, but it doesn't always work very well when you've got a very extreme scenario such as this with very bright sky and dark foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image and I'm going to take this image and combine them. So this one's just exposed for the foreground. Now you can see some haze in it, but that's not going to um, affect the image too much. Um, so the first thing we need to do is learn how to combine them using HDR. So the first thing we do is you select your images. So you press down the shift key and you click and select the images you want. Now I've got two, you could use three or four if you like. Um, then what we do is we go to here we right click and we go to photo merge and HDR. So what this is going to do is it's going to generate a preview. Okay, so now you can see that in the preview that the two layers are merged and we can see that it's worked quite well with the light foreground here, a good exposure in the middle ground and a good exposure in the background. So once you're happy with that and you don't see any red masking lines where the deghost, deghost overlay is showing you where there's an issue, then move on. So the next thing you do is press merge. Now just need to wait for this bar to go all the way along to the right and then it will merge the two images. Okay, it's successfully merged the two images now um, and the HDMR um, merge will appear either before or after your images. In this case, it's after. So here is the merge. Now, at this point, we want to um, focus in on this with a little bit more detail. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the develop module. Okay, um, I'm going to now um, get rid of this bar here as well. Now, the next thing to do 
is to um, deal with the image as a whole, and then we're going to put some layer masks on it. So the image as a whole, let's just take you through this, and I'll take you through what I do. So first of all, we've got color and black and white. Obviously, if you click black and white, the whole image is adjusted for black and white editing. Um, now, got a couple of things that, that I use a lot, a couple of things I hardly ever use. Now, the temperature slider, this can be useful if you just want to warm that image a tiny bit, but be careful with it. I would just move it a very, very small amount either end, and it creates very extreme um, images, very, very cold or very warm, and it looks very artificial. We've got the overall exposure. Now, at the moment, I'm going to leave that where it is um, because the overall exposure is good. I need to re-expose the individual parts slightly differently. We've got overall contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Now these are all useful things. Um, shadows and bringing up the shadows can be very, very useful. Um, for instance, if I bring it up in the foreground area, you can see, um, sorry, if I bring up the shadows, you can see this foreground area brightens, but it can go a little bit too bright and, that, and then it can look quite kind of hazy and strange. So you do need to be slightly careful with shadows. Um, right, and then we have texture, clarity and dehaze. Now these are all very useful. I find they're better used in a layer, but um, you can create, um, you can add a little bit um, to these individual, uh, to, to the whole image um, using these, but I would be very, very cautious. Upping the clarity a lot creates this very unnatural feel to the image. Upping the dehaze a lot also creates a very unnatural feel to the image. So I'd be careful with those and mainly do those in layer masking. I'm going to go into that in more detail later on. For now, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of dehaze uh, to the whole scene. So um, the next thing, uh, we have a tone curve. Okay, this allows you to look at the, um, the, the exposure values in the image. I generally don't use that that much. Um, I, the one thing I do use a lot is this luminance and saturation panel. Now saturation, you need to be very careful with. This is the amount of one color. So for instance, if we up the greens, the greens become more saturated, so there's more of them. If we up the oranges, then suddenly it really changes it. Now that's starting to look very, very artificial and strange. So we want to avoid um, upping those too much. And then we have luminance, so the amount of, um, uh, the, the, the amount of luminance, the amount of light in that color. Now sometimes this one is a fantastic um, function that you need to be careful with it. Again, we've got, for instance, the mountains have gone too white and too bright because of the orange that's in them. If you take it down too far, you get a very unnatural, almost surreal looking feel. So you need to just make careful, slight adjustments to that to change the luminance. Now that works really well. Color grading, you use this in some conditions, but this kind of image, I wouldn't use it for. Again, welcome to play around with that. Sharpening, if you feel the image needs sharpening, you can sharpen it. I would just sharpen it a small amount. I wouldn't sharpen it that much. And then we've got two check boxes towards the bottom here. Remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Now, enable profile connections, if you click that, that stops any form of barrel distortion or pincushion distortion or moustache distortion. And those are three different types of distortion that you get from most lenses. Now, in this case, my lens doesn't have that much distortion. And also for a landscape scene like this, it doesn't really matter. It matters more when you're um, taking things like, it's essential for architecture, straight lines, great lines perspective, because it will, um, it will correct those um, inbuilt uh, issues with any lens. No lens is perfect. Now, chromatic aberration is a really, really important one to always have clicked. That just gets rid of any kind of purple or yellow fringing on the edge of your subject matter, um, especially on the hard defined edges, like the edge of mountains and things like that. It can make a difference. In a shot like this, however, it won't make much difference, but it's important to have that checked. So those are all the overall edits. So that's 
editing the entire image. Okay, now these two are very, very important for editing the whole. So just two more, two more things to, um, to think about. So first of all, cropping, don't need to explain this in great detail, but if you feel you want to crop into your image slightly and take out a section of it, then really, really carefully consider how much you're going to crop and where you're going to crop. Now, I want most of this texture here and I want most of the width here as well. So I'm gonna leave it roughly where it is and just crop it in a small amount. And then this is very important. So spot removal. Now, spot removal, if I just, um, if I just uh, click off that for a second, um, spot removal, if you have any dust spots on your center, if you're photographing clear skies, it's absolutely essential that you look at spot removal because it can really ruin an image. And what it allows you to do, if I just bring back this panel here for a second, it allows you to go in and have a good look. Now, if I click on visualize spots, what it does is it allows you to much more easily see the spots in the image. Then I can zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in to about um, maybe, um, maybe 33%. Okay, and I'm going to scan it a bit like a typewriter for any spots. Now, we can see some kind of artifact here. Now, before you just heal it with visualize spots on, turn it off, have a look at it, and we can see a tiny, tiny, tiny artifact there. So we want to get rid of that. So what we want to do then is make sure that the spot heal brush is as small as possible around the image but it has to have that, that, that artifact actually in the kit and it will process and then it will disappear. And if we take that back in, we can see that that spot has now gone. Now that was a very, very faint spot, but it's important to get rid of any of them in clear sky. It can really ruin your, um, your image. So we're gonna go along. Now, obviously here, um, it's cloud. So you're not gonna see in the cloud itself. We just need to look nice and carefully for any other artifacts in the image at all. And then just click on that to go back to the whole image. So that is editing the whole image. Now it's not finished yet. This is the next bit. So we want to, we've done the HDR. We've edited the whole image to start off with. Then we're going to do some layer masks and then we're going to edit the whole image to finish. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that section there. Okay. And I'm going to press M on my keyboard. Okay. So in order to, um, in order to carry on, uh, once we've done all our, um, editing of the whole image, now we need to do some, um, layer masks. So let's have a look at these layer masks. So first of all, um, the sky is slightly too bright. Now this is a fantastic layer mask. We've got, um, subject select and sky select. So if we press on sky select, it will detect the sky. And what I want to do is I want to then bring that exposure value slightly down in line with the ground around it. So here we are. So here's the, um, the layer mask. Now the layer masks are always pink or red. Um, once you put them on, then they will um, they'll go away as soon as you start um, working on it. So what I want to do with this is I want to just take down the exposure of the sky slightly, only a tiny bit, and then I'm going to use a tiny bit of dehaze. Now be careful with this. I showed you this before. Do you need to be careful? But what this will do is it will take some of the haze out of the sky and it'll allow the sky to become slightly more dramatic. Now. We don't want it to look artificial. It's really, really important. So just enough to bring some color into the sky here. Don't want to take this down any more than it is already. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of clarity to that as well. Now that just brings up the definition between the darks and lights, and it'll work in these areas and on the clouds. Now for me, that's enough. So sky select is the first one that I often do. Okay, second one that I do, um, just to add to the sky, is I do a 
um, linear gradient. Now the linear gradient tool is fantastic. Um, now what it does is it just allows you to, um, to darken the top going down to a lighter base. Now, as you can see, first of all, I'm, um, I'm aligning my, um, my linear gradients. Okay, and I wanna make sure it's straight on the top and straight on the bottom. Now you can see that some of it has gone over this mountain here. Now in other videos, I can show you how to sort that out. But for now, it's not gonna make any difference. Um, if you apply a subtle linear gradient, it will really only apply it to this top half of the section. You won't see a difference on this mountain here. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take down the exposure and the difference is this time, if I take it right down so you can see what's happening, it's darkening this section from here to here. Now that looks ridiculous. It looks like some kind of horror movie or something. I'm gonna bring that up and I'm gonna make that as kind of subtle as I can. So just, just taking that down a little bit. Now you can see that it's starting to vignette the sky slightly. It starts to look slightly weird. So I'm just gonna bring that exposure up to where I want it to be, okay? So that's about right. Now, so that's the sky sorters. The next thing is one of my favorites, again, one of my favorite masks here, is luminance range. Now this is something I use a lot and it's because it allows you to apply um, editing just to one section and you can refine it as well. So if I click on luminance range, okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the foreground. What I'm looking for in the foreground is I'm looking for um, just the foreground trees really. So we can see this way, it takes out these trees. So I want to put these trees back in on this side. So that's the darker side. And then on this side, I really want to take out um, the mountains in the background uh, like they are here and just apply it to this foreground area. So there we are. So again, we've got the mask on. Now what we can do is we can add to this and change it. So for this one, using a bit of clarity in the foreground does work very, very well. Um, but again, be careful with it. So here we go, I'm gonna increase the clarity. What it's gonna do is just work on those cliffs a little bit more and work on the pathways. Now there is my finished image. Now, Lots of these small changes make a final image, which I feel is really worth having and really accurately records the feeling, the color, the mood of that time and place. And that's what it's all about. So that's the end of this video. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.